Ladies and gentlemen, bout nine is a super fight matched at 55k over three three minute rounds of action as sponsored by Palchik TKD. Would you welcome first into the blue corner, James Nickel? Would you welcome his opponent into the red corner? Todd the Flash Williams. This is a super fight matched at 55k over three, three minute rounds of action. And in the blue corner, he weighed in at 54.6k. He has a three fight record, two wins and one loss. Representing the Combat Academy, James Nichol. And his opponent in the red corner. He weighed in at 55.1K. He has a seven fight record with six wins and one loss. He represents the Fighting Tigers, Todd the Flash Williams. Your referee, Mr. Chris Batchelor. Kickboxing action here in the Super Fight Series at 55 kilograms. James Nickel out of the blue corner. Todd Williams out of the red. Todd representing the Fighting Tigers. James representing the Combat Gym. Tom fighting out of Hastings. James from St. Albans, an all UK affair here. Chris Hookster alongside Malcolm Martin. Great to have you with us here from the London's Your Call. Should be a great one. Love this weight class. Love both guys. We've seen them before, Mal. Always here to entertain. That's right, Chris. And as you mentioned, it's the weight class. It'll be the speed. It'll be the movement. It'll be the, the pressure and then the counters. But as you said, both these young men really beginning to make their mark. And exciting young fighters coming up through the ranks. And again, this is a marvellous platform for them, the Super Fight Series, to really get noticed. People talk about the Super Fight Series. It's posted a lot, so this is an instant way to really get your name out there. And you'll never see Todd or James in a boring fight. That's one of the things that you often see from both kids. They're young, they're exciting, they're flashy. They want to go out there and make a statement. So you talked about it, Malk. This is a platform, this is a chance for both of them to go out there and show the skills they have to take that next step in their careers. And picking up on what we said about their characters already, we've, we've looked at different tactics in certain bouts. They're both in the pocket the whole time. Look how close they stay. They're always there looking for ascendancy that close. And that was a nice right hand. The first big shot of the day comes from James Nickel there in close. And that's the reason he could land it, Chris. They're both in the pocket. James is standing southpaw more frequently than his opponent. Todd's a good confident switch hitter, but James has landed some good kicks, particularly from that rear leg. He's loading up with some good body kicks, but that being said, Todd also has landed a few times cleanly. You can see the physical evidence there on his midsection. Good That's body right. kicks from both guys. But what you alluded to here, Chris, I like the way that James will work the body to bring the legs in. Watch him work the body with the hands and then bring that low kick in on the end. Always working the combination. And that left hand lands from the southpaw stance again. It's those rear tools that you've got to watch out for in that open stance matchup. That being said, I just saw Todd throw a lead leg hook kick. Flying knee there from Todd into a right hook. Both men connecting. Huge knee again. Excellent stuff. And both men connected with the right hands at the same time. And then Todd tried to change it up with that jumping knee. But this is what I'm saying about the excitement level of the bat. And Todd has just landed again cleanly. It's because they're both willing to stand and trade and rely on defensive movement while you're still in the pocket. They're always that close. The best way I would describe to somebody if they couldn't see this action would be it's kind of like playing a video game and mashing buttons. We're seeing that many combinations. Both men just showing everything and so much movement too. It's just gorgeous. 
Well, Todd is beginning to come back here, Chris. I saw some good work from Nickel earlier. But Todd is beginning to come back through the channel with his own punches as well. And they will have success at this level. Like, as you said, like the video game, both men are pressing on those buttons constantly. But the danger for Nickel is the way that Williams brings the knee in at the end. And what a finish to this round. Why knee again there from Tata, like the long guard. He's setting things up, chopping low kick again. That is the bell, and that for me, Malcolm Martin, has to be the round of the night. I agree with you. The pace set by both men. And this is the thing, Chris. Look at that left hand to the body. That's what I said. Nickel sets up those kicks beautifully, but then there's the right hand that hits and the body shot, and normally followed up with the legs. And then there, that landed flush. That was a Nickel took that well because the right hand on the end, back and forward, Chris, superb stuff as you alluded to, and both willing to take shots to give shots back. It's interesting to me that in the pre-fight talk, we saw both guys go out there and say, look, I am the future, I'm the way that the sport is going to evolve in kickboxing. And you know, see the dynamic kicking style and background of Todd. You see the aggression of Nickel and that really confident approach to the southpaw matchup that he has. We saw those rear tools, that rear kick, that lead uh, punch that he often threw with the left from the back. I mean, that's an art in itself to lead with your rear hand. Great when, stuff. When you've got a wall like that, though, Chris, and it's going back and forward, the last technique of that opening round was the timed kick from Williams that took Nickel off his feet. Nickel came back straight up, but the bell had already went. This is, is beautifully balanced. So two of three here at the York Hall. And the action at 55 certainly has not disappointed. And again, it's a nice clash of styles from that, that southpaw and orthodox style that Chris alluded to earlier. And it means that you both can be vulnerable to your opponent when he comes forward. Spin kick there from Williams, but all that happened was he had the lead leg taken by Nickel, but closes the gap. That jumping knee, I'm telling you, Chris, if he lands that clean, it can be a fight ender. Todd's pressing the action really nicely here. It's smart. Especially against a guy who loves to do the same in James. They're very similar. I mean, they do things differently, but there's some similar patterns you can see from both. And as you said that, and in fact, the similarity, big left hand from Nickel lands as, as Williams comes forward. I think Williams drew a couple of the right hand, right leg combination. And there's that knee again. There's only so many of those Nickel to take if it comes in cleanly. It was the confidence that finished that round strongly from Williams that is coming into this second round. Nickel says let's go a moment ago, but that's a sign he got cracked. Spinning hook kick there. Todd taking a dump, but the floor falling out from underneath him there. He went a little bit deep and stepped and tried to catch him with the back of the leg coming over the top, but... Oy, nice, alternating straight punches here from James Nickel. And it all came from a good shot to the body from Williams as he landed the body shot. Williams exploded with the punches over the top in the counter. And we've seen this many times. You're vulnerable when you're in full flow and attacking. And either of these young men can capitalize on it. There's still a lot of twists and turns in this one. James is looking to catch that kick and dump him down again. You can see it again. He's going to try to redirect it, shuttle it to the side and counter, or catch it and try to throw him. But it's the pace here at 55K. It's been unrelenting. And the fact that they stay here in the pocket and trade these shots. Nickel forging forward again, though. Nice check there. James did a good job of checking and then throwing combinations. Punches, setting up the kicks. There the clinch. I mean, both guys can clinch. They've got those skills. But the fact is, under the K1 kickboxing rule set, you're not going to see that. I kind of like to see these two in a full tie rules fight, if you don't mind me saying, but... I, c I can understand why you do that, but again, Williams spun, and it's not the sort of guy you want to do that against, the way that Nickel can counter so quickly. And there's those straight punches. They've given Todd problems before, Chris. I wish we had the fight metrics here. Axe kick there from Todd. I mean, so many strikes, and so many significant strikes. Both guys are landing. It's not been a defense first performance whatsoever. Oh, no, definitely not. Um, what a way to finish the round. I mean, you can hear the applause. People are really beginning to respect this, Chris. And it's back and forward, back and forward. Sorry there, Malk. I had to drop my mic just to applaud along with the audience. And you can see why here. It's just technique for technique. And 
the cool thing is that both guys can do those things technically correct. And it's so difficult to pull off some of this stuff in a kickboxing fight, but the stuff that we're seeing there and the way that guys counter each other, Todd and his opponent, James, have really brought out the very best of each other. And that's what you look for in a young fighter. You want to match them up. You want to give them experience. You want them to gain ring time. To be honest, though, both guys have just gone out there and put on a show tonight. That's right, and it's hard, it's back and forward. And when you saw those replays, the moments for each of the men, it's tough for the judges as well because no one's managed to sustain an assault for a big period in the round. So it's still, I feel, everything to fight for. And having said that, let's forget the points. A jumping knee from Todd, one of those big right hands from James. We might not need the judges still in this third round. Touch of gloves. Third and final round here. Three minutes on the clock if necessary at the York Hall. Super Fight Series bringing you Super Fight after Super Fight. Both men exchange hands and kicks again now. It's just furious. It's that sort of bout, and, and they're both in the zone. They're, they're both absolutely right there in that pocket. And both are aware of what the other is capable of, and they don't mind. And for me, that one shot that might land cleanly on the button, whether it's that right hook of Nickel or that jumping knee of Williams could still turn this on its head. If you were to look up the word frenetic in the dictionary, I think you'd probably find their names under the definition. It's just been so wild. And the thing is, it's not like an out of control wild fight. Both guys are trying to do what they do best and land, and they're both landing. That's a good point. It, it's not like this is a slugfest, and it, it's technical as well. They know what they're doing, and they know when to throw it. And there's that jumping knee that I love from Williams, and it really does catch the eye when he does that. But immediately look how Nickel then walks him down. Nice slip there. Todd did a beautiful job. Slipped the one, two, and then comes with a right cross. He didn't spin in a straight direction. He's got to keep that as a straight kick. If he wants to spin in that 360 degree back kick, it's a straight kick. Too many guys mess that up and go circular, but hey, they're both tired, they're three rounds deep. Who am I to judge, you know, but... I know what you're saying, but there again, then Nickel put a low kick across both thighs of, of Todd Williams. It's been that sort of bout, and I wouldn't want to be a judge in this one. And if I was in either corner after what these two young lads have brought to the table, I'd be so disappointed to take the loss on this one. Yeah, there's no loser in this fight. It's been the best fight of the night. I think the first round was round of the night for me, and this is, for me, the type of fight that you could watch back a few times and learn a lot from. Because both guys are doing things technically, and they're doing it under pressure in the chaos. In the middle of exchanges, you know, moving forward, moving backward. They're hurt, they're tired. It's been the sloppiest round, if you wanted to call it a sloppy round, because both guys have really left it all out there in the ring, but man, I, I've just lost count. Yeah, I mean, we had an axe kick there and taking the standing leg. And as you said, they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe now. They're almost impervious to the pain now. They've gone through that barrier and they're just looking to ramp it up here. And the crowd realize this as well. It's been beautiful to watch. And cardio, not a problem at all. And I know what you mean by the sloppies. It's just that fatigue now and the amount shown. But look at that right leg from Williams. Head kick there from Williams. It looked to me from my angle on the monitor that James was able to get his hands up, but sometimes that's not enough. Williams cracked him there. And then Nickel comes back. Huge flurry here towards the end. I listen to the crowd. They know what they're seeing here. Hook kick Whoa. from the right hand. Chris, yes. That was absolutely beautiful. And Chris Batchelder, our referee, clapping everyone as well. The two corners are hugging. The fighters are sat against the rope side by side with big grins on their face. Sometimes you know when you've witnessed something special. The fighters know it, the corners know it, the referee knows it. Listen to the response. And this is why, Chris, yes, sloppy in this final round, but after three rounds of God knows how many techniques thrown, as you said, if we could see the stats, it would be incredible. And if anybody ever told you they weren't sure whether they would be a fan of kickboxing, I would say undoubtedly watch Williams and Nickel go at it here. Nine minutes of pure adrenaline-filled excitement. We'll go to the judges' scorecards, and I gotta be honest, who knows? We all probably saw some different angles and some different stuff. It's gonna come down to how things were tallied up and who got the points overall, but 
It could be on a knife edge here. We'll get the result momentarily ringside here from Mr. Malcolm Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll agree after three rounds of action, a contender for fight of the night here at the Super Fight Series. Unbelievable from these two young men. And these two young warriors have taken us to a majority decision. But that decision is in favour of the blue corner, James Nichols.